Hello again. Like most people, I'm used to hearing on the news that Gaza and the neighbouring cities which make up what used to be known as the Gaza Strip are simply one huge refugee camp. Some critics describe the place as a concentration camp. There is something strange about this because it certainly wasn't the case in 2011, which is just um, 13 years ago. What on earth has happened since then to make the place so dreadful? The thumbnail to this video shows a theme park which opened in Gaza in May 2011. It's full of children enjoying themselves while the adults relax, drinking alcohol and smoking. It was indistinguishable from the kind of thing which you might have found at any Mediterranean resort or indeed in a seaside town in this country for the matter of that. Three swimming pools, water slides, lakes with pedal boats, cafes, bars, places for adults to hang out while their children played in the water. The Crazy Water Aqua Fun Park was fairly typical of things being opened in Gaza at that time. To be honest, it doesn't look much like a concentration camp or even a refugee camp, does it? You can see it, as I say, in the thumbnail to this video. I'll give a link in the description to this video to the Wikipedia page about this place. Luxury hotels were also opening by the sea. Smart cafes and bars were springing up, casinos, beauty salons, nail bars. Gaza was being transformed into a fashionable resort in the years following the Israeli withdrawal in 2005. How did Israel feel about these developments? They were, of course, delighted. Let's face it, what would you rather have on your doorstep? A smart Mediterranean resort with five-star hotels and plenty of tourists? Or a failed state full of religious maniacs running around waving Kalashnikov assault rifles and shouting Allahu Akbar? I give a link in the description to this video too to the TripAdvisor listing for four of the luxury hotels in Gaza which are still open. They are really all that remains now of this period. This was a time when the border between Gaza and Israel was open. Many people from Gaza worked in Israel. Buses ran a normal service between Gaza and Tel Aviv. What on earth do you suppose happened to change Gaza from this open and free society into what we see today? Why did Israel seal the border? What went wrong? Looking at the crazy water aquafun park is instructive. After Israel handed over Gaza to Fatah, there was agreement that Israel and the leadership there would live side by side peacefully. They recognised each other's existence. Then, in 2006 and 2007, there was a civil war in Gaza, which resulted in Hamas seizing control, together with the death of well over a thousand Palestinians. Hamas refused to abide by the treaty which Fatah had with Israel, and in 2008 they began firing rockets into Israel. Despite this, some oil states invested in the area, which resulted in the possibility that Gaza would become a proper seaside resort and attract tourists from places like Saudi and so on. Hamas, though, disapproved of anything which they regarded as un-Islamic. That meant casinos, bars, nightclubs, practically anything, really. Gradually they started closing down all these places where men and women mixed normally. There was anger about the crazy water park because women there were on equal terms with men and they were even smoking there and drinking alcohol. In September 2011, four months after it opened, 40 masked and armed men turned up one night with cans of petrol and burnt the place down. The same thing happened with some nightclubs and other places which were un-Islamic. 
The rocket attacks on Israel continued, and slowly but surely, Gaza became less and less attractive to tourists, who stopped arriving at the hotels, many of which closed down. The reason for the current state of Gaza is not the wicked Israelis, but the fanatics of Hamas. Gaza could have been like any other Mediterranean resort, but all the casinos have been closed, along with the bars, nightclubs, cafes, spas, beauty salons and all the rest of it. This was not Israel's doing, but the direct orders of Hamas. That is why Gaza's brief era of prosperity did not last, and how it turned into the drab place that we see today.